this place is not like it's so chaotic that there is no law and order it's just unfortunately there are people on the ground looking out for themselves due to poverty greed due to short-sightedness and they make life difficult for the entrepreneur especially people who look like me right if you look like me and you're trying to make it they just look at you like where the hell do you think you're going in this video we're going to dive into why there's so much opportunities in ghana wherever there is risk hardship problems and uncertainty there lies the opportunity and ghana has all of these and to top it off the government is pretty stable which means it's not there's not a lot of cool there's not wars in play and all that ghana is relatively peaceful as a matter of fact if you are making your own money you plan on not doing any business at all you want to move to a country ghana is one of the best places for you to be in because you're gonna have your peace of mind uh and have a great time your life becomes difficult in ghana once you are trying to do a business that's when things get a little stressful uh because fortunately your own people on the ground are constantly looking for ways to make it uh you know you have to understand the territory that you are in most people uh, are short-sighted uh they are thinking about today and tomorrow and they will screw you over in a heartbeat when they get a chance especially if you are trying to dive into the real estate space the land you know laws and land issues in ghana is is brutal i mean about 70 percent of the court cases in ghana is land land is a big deal it's a huge problem and over the years ghana has become a place where a lot of people want to come here and buy land and develop a business so land issue has always been the case but in the past 20 years it has been very 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 brutal right like uh almost like life and death situations sometimes and uh, before we judge Ghana, before we dive into Ghana and go hard about Ghana, let's remember that every country has its own problems, right? And you do have to analyze it. For example, uh, America has a lot of their own problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the food, the people having credit card issues, um, you know, taxes. If you don't know your taxes, you're going to pay, you know, a lot of taxes. You can make a lot of money. You're never going to go anywhere because of taxes and you just have to learn the rules of the game and you can be the game so in america you can live a very healthy life you can save a lot of money on your taxes though the same systems in play you can find a way to solve it and instead of us sitting here and complaining in this video that's not what we're going we're going to do what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you the game and tell you the problem that we have at hand and you know people like myself we see that as an opportunity uh, rather than a problem right uh, a lot of people look at the situation at hand in Ghana and say, wow, Ghana is a place where I will never do business again, ever again. I posted a video not long ago with a good friend of mine, Marvin Walker, and he's having some difficulties. And the comments, a lot of people say, no way, I will never do any business in Ghana and stuff like that. That was not the purpose of the video. The purpose of the video is to let you guys know that, you know, wherever you want to go in life, there are going to be some difficulties, uh, of course. And we have to openly talk about these problems that you can expect to have. On the ground you will have these problems and this problem is the reason why you are still here so let's look at why ghana is one of the most lucrative places for you to invest real estate wise and why i think it's worth the risk right let's look at bitcoin right bitcoin was a very risky asset class still is but not as much when it was really risky nobody wanted to you know get a bitcoin as a matter of fact it was once upon a time where you could get one bitcoin for one dollar can you believe that if you did that you would have been rich super rich by now if you would have spent like five bucks on it you would have been super rich by now about 20 years ago not even because bitcoin came out around 2000 after the 2008 financial crisis so it hasn't been 20 years yet right when it came out it was pennies so if you would have bought some bitcoin because it was very risky nobody believed in it it was so speculative you would have been super rich right now if you only put like 10 bucks in ten dollars if you have invested ten dollars in bitcoin about 19 years ago you will be a rich man by now right or a rich woman that's how i look at certain stuff such as ghana right so why am i saying that ghana presents a lot of opportunity because a lot of investors are scared the big money right when i say the big money uh the U u.s stock market is being controlled and run by institutional money right like hedge funds big companies big money pull of money these companies when they come they're gonna buy uh, all the properties on the beachfront they're gonna buy out the city and they're gonna drive up prices and the opportunities that lie before you or you and i the average joe is no longer going to be as visible and as accessible things are going to be pretty tough when institutional money keep pouring in and believe it or not 
some of that money is in Ghana and Africa in general, but it's not as much because of the uncertainty and the risk involved, which is why people can come and acquire a riverfront property that's been laying down all these years because people are just scared to buy it because of all the issues that they can potentially encounter, right? The big money is not coming on the ground and that that presents a lot of opportunity. Land prices in Ghana just skyrocketed like crazy. Like the past 20 to 15 years, that's when the land prices in Ghana got crazy. Land prices in Ghana was relatively low. There has always been issues on land, but it was not as crazy. Just recently where a lot of foreign money is pouring into the country and the greed for land and the greed for money has been on unprecedented levels. So I'm just saying this to let you know that this hard times is not going to be there forever and why it still exists now is the very reason why you have the opportunity to take advantage of it if you are somebody who can analyze the risk and take advantage of that like myself i have actually uh, embarked on a journey where i help people buy land i've sold many many lands to many 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 people and nobody has ever lost money before uh, the truth of the matter is nobody has ever bought land for me and lost it before how am i able to do this well, I have developed a system to, first of all, guarantee the people that I'm selling the land to money back in case anything goes wrong. And the people that I'm selling the land for, I have done extensive research. I know them. I know where to find them. And if anything goes wrong, I'm going to get my money from them. And I put the things in place and I'm on the ground. So the person coming from outside in doesn't have to do all that groundwork, right? this is an arbitrage opportunity for me that would not exist if everything was so black and white right like if you were to buy land there was no issues like in ghana there is no issues at all you buy land and you're good to go then that arbitrage opportunity for some of you guys who don't know what arbitrage is it's, let's say bitcoin is is, is trading seventy thousand dollars in america and it's trading sixty eight thousand dollars in ghana right now that's an arbitrage opportunity for somebody like me who know of this. I will come in and, you know, buy it in Ghana and sell in the U.S. and make two grand. That's arbitrage. I'm in between. So this last situation is I'm taking on the risk. I'm guaranteeing the money for whoever is coming who is, you know, doesn't know the territory that they get themselves into, don't know who to go to the right person. They will get burnt if they try to do it themselves. So they have to go to me to buy the land. As a third party, I'm going to make a little bit of money by helping that, ensuring that they get their money back in case anything goes wrong. So... I'm just giving this is a personal example because I love to use my personal example rather than pointing to somebody else. It makes it more relatable. This opportunity wouldn't exist if everything was so black and white. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm actually doing this to help a lot of people in the diaspora out, not lose their money. Um, as a matter of fact, I never wanted to touch land uh, in Ghana. It's just out of people constantly asking me. That's why I dived into this and I figure a system that works and I've, I've been able to, you know, sell land to people with no issues at all. And partly because of my own, you know, ordeal being in court and my land situation. Don't get me wrong, I've bought a lot of land, including my house was built on the land that I bought, right? But land issues in Ghana, it is just so common. Uh, this shouldn't happen, but that's the case on the ground. But me being in court, me being on the ground, me doing this i've really studied the system and i've i just know so much that is public service i'm doing public service though i'm getting paid for it but these are opportunities that's on the ground so you will come in uh with the money you'll be able to do something that you wouldn't be able to do 30 years from now right so let's go back in time our grandparents and uh, you know our parents had opportunity to come down here with a thousand dollars and get a plot of land two plots of land in east Lagos. And that plot of land right now is going for $200,000. And most of the people like myself, young people is coming in, that don't have $200,000 for a plot of land. They got to go out and, you know, to a place where they can get up for $5,000, $6,000. And that opportunity is no longer going to be available 10 years from now. We've seen it happen in the past. So why wait, right? It's like, if, if we are talking about something that's never happened before, then we will be like okay what what are you what are we talking about but that's not the case here this has actually happened right spin test is still going these places were so cheap back in the days the people that didn't buy it they messed out i was too young to do that and uh now here i am now accumulating as much land as i possibly can because you just gotta you just gotta jump in like america right now to buy a house is so hard because it's so expensive 
the big money is taking over investing huge sums of money in single family homes and you know they're taking over just for rent and the pricing is just crazy bitcoin is going through the roof over seventy thousand dollars now per bitcoin because it got institutionalized right they are trading that on the new york stock exchange now okay so when big money is pouring into anything the opportunity to just jump in either vanishes or it goes like the barrier for you to enter is just so high right you have to have a lot of money to jump in whereas right now if you have five thousand dollars to your name you could actually start something it's not going to be the case um 10 who knows even five years from now so there are a lot of these stuff in play and as the world changes the world is changing yes most people look at africa and they think africa will be like this forever that's not the case because people thought china was going to be poor forever right the chinese poor farmer you know the peasants and all that stuff you know asia was never rich asia became what they are today less than 30 years ago all right singapore was built out of nothing you know while the people on the ground on these african countries think a certain way africans are where we are today primarily because of our mindset um and you know the impact that colonialism had on us like people are a little brainwashed you know they don't believe in themselves they believe too much in the educational system not taking risks they don't read on their own you know religion it, it the list goes on and on that has set us back but when it comes to natural resources and our ability our real ability to do it we have what it takes out here to make it big and we just don't believe in ourselves uh based on systematic programming and uh the opportunities are down here and it's only a matter of time for things to turn around so wherever there is risk pain hardship and problems to be solved there lies the opportunity for you my friend and when you're looking at the issues on the ground don't look at it as a bad thing look at it as a good thing for you and look at what you can do to solve it what can you do to help the country move forward faster because it is going to happen whether it's in 10 years whether it's 20 years whether it's 30 years 40 years, 50 years but it's going to happen if not in our lifetime our children will experience it so what are you what kind of actions are you taking to guarantee that you know your children have a brighter future that your children own a piece of land that your children own some of these companies on the ground because trust me the indians are down here the chinese are down here and the europeans are down here doing tremendous businesses and you know they are making a lot of money now the downside is most of these people when they make the money they take the money out of the country and they ship it out right and they ship it out to their respective countries right and so it's not really benefiting the country as much you get it so um what we can do is come here set up business because we have nowhere to take the money it's only going to stay here and get bigger and help the economy develop so uh, i want us to be strong uh, not all of us are entrepreneurs not all of us have the men mental you know fortitude to come out here and pull ourselves through the pain that is going to inevitably you know kick your butt most people don't want to go through the stress there's only a few people who are willing to go through that especially you know if you got a great job and you want to give all of that up to come and do what to come and uh face all these like mental you know agony a lot of people are just not going to do it but you have to be perspicacious right and uh and then know that you know the future is bright and be willing to endure the pain and have some sort of delayed gratification because the future is going to be sweet this is the message that i have for you guys today while africa seems to be a lot of problems and all that stuff you can easily look at it as an opportunity especially if the government is stable as ghana right a very stable government they have systems in place right if somebody is trying to unlawfully take your line and stuff like that it's a slow or just process but the law works and you can go to the court system they have the you know the trial courts then you can appeal the case if if the judge was being you know uh biased or whatever you may we might think you might think like oh you know the, the judgment was not fair towards you you can appeal it and it can go all the way to the supreme court just like in the united states and it works i am going to be a testament to that i'm in court and when the case is over everything will be publicized and we will see where it goes from there so this place is not like it's so chaotic that there is no law and order it's just unfortunately there are people on the ground looking out for themselves due to poverty greed due to short-sightedness 
and they make life difficult for the entrepreneur especially people who look like me right if you look like me and you're trying to make it they just look at you like where the hell do you think you're going right unfortunately africans love their oppressors like i don't know what contributes to that but you know if born and raised here most people really worship the oppressors they, they worship them they look at them as they are better than them they, they they like unfortunately this is the case they look at them as they're smarter you know they deserve to be their boss they will go to extreme length to make sure that you know their boss is happy with them but when you look like me and you're trying to do something here they look at you like what the hell does this you know person think he's going Let, let's put him back and you know you see this time and time again uh when the chinese indians lebanese come here they buy land they will build with no problem at all nobody would dare tempt them because you know automatically they know that okay these people will take me to court they have lawyers you know they'll make my life difficult it's not even worth it they're probably even connected to a higher person in the government they just don't try them and they do their business in peace uh, whereas if somebody like me you know somebody who looks like me is coming they think you're stupid they think oh this guy doesn't want to go to court uh you know this guy will probably even pay up and you don't you would not follow the process which is the case with mine um definitely why i'm in court right now because that person miscalculated and thought i would pay up instead of going through the due process and here we are today so if you've not subscribed to the channel already kindly do so these are some of the opportunities that are down here because of the very problem that we are complaining about so look through the lens and take advantage of that because the lebanese the chinese and other european countries are out here making as much money as possible and taking it out